have got uh, Priyank as well. He's a resident mortgage broker. And I am Arnav Nandi, director of Hinson Shores Property Buyers. What we do, we'll get to it. Yeah? So today's presentation is about navigating the city real estate market. And this is the nice of home buyers. How many of you are looking to buy home? <laughs> Love it. First home buyers. Fantastic. You know, I, I actually intended this session for the home buyers because we have a lot of investment sessions going on. And secondly, I paid for the session as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, uh, that was on a lighter note. But yes, I think we are in Sydney. The, the Property Forum Australia has, um, has organized the expo in Sydney, and so how not to have a session on Sydney? What do you, what do you say, everyone? Is it exciting? Can I hear some noise? For Sydney, okay? All right. Okay, before we go forward, just have a quick read through this. All right. Um, I do like it to be interactive, but yes, not let's not you know step on each other. You know, just make it really easy for us, uh, for each one of us to ask questions. All good, and let's have, have some fun, which is not mentioned here. Okay, I thought I'll I'll talk about that. Okay, who are uh, Hills and Trust property buyers? You know, we we are a buyers agency. And we help buyers because we understand the pain that you guys go through. Because we, or myself, was a buyer or a first home buyer at some point of time. And we keep buying properties, okay? So we are a buyer anyways, yeah? Um, so things are quite complex when you come from, uh, let's say, you know, a different country or you are living in a different place and buying in a, another place, you really don't have much knowledge about that. You have to keep going and inspecting, let's say six months to get hold of, okay, I understand this place now. Otherwise you're going based on what your friends are saying or some people in your office are telling, right? So we make things very easy for you. Make sure that, uh, you know, we buy, help you buy properties that have value, okay? When I say value, you buy it today, you keep, keep sitting on it, it gives you more value then maybe the next property which was sold, okay? So this is this is really our USP. So we help you buy properties which with a, with a growth potential, all right? We are local to the hills and the northwest region, and that's why we have a lot more command than other people in those areas. So yes, who has heard this term, the real estate is local? Anybody here? No, okay. So I have just twisted that. I said the real estate has to be Real, all right. So when I say real, you need to be on the ground to see how things going on, are going on. And we are literally on the ground. I was at the auction yesterday. I was inspecting at least five, seven properties yesterday. Okay. Now you might be thinking, oh, okay, that's a very boring job. Well, that's that's my passion, you know. So I I, I like doing that. But yes, I think it might be very time-consuming and stressful for you guys when you go and inspect every property, and then you have no clue what the real estate agent is selling you. They may say, oh, the price guide is $1 million. And when it is sold, it is $1.5 million. How does that feel? Fantastic, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you're a buyer, it is a waste of time. Correct, that's right. So um, we'll get to it anyways. OK, uh, so we'll talk about sellers, we'll talk about buyers. But let's look at what's the future of Sydney, OK? So where is Sydney going? Ah, man, I love that word, I love that word. All right, so Sydney, the plan of Sydney is to have a metropolis of three cities, you know? You have the eastern one, which is already there. Yeah? Everybody goes to work, most of you, goes to work and most of uh, uh, you know, the work or uh, uh, the development has happened on that side, okay? Now next to the central city and the western city. Now the western city, everyone talks about is there's a new airport that's coming, all the developments are going to go there. Who thinks there would be no development on that side? Nobody, right? Yes, there would be developments on the western side of it, but I'm going to bring a different picture today, which is about the central city, all right? So central city revolves around which, which location? Yes, we are in Parramatta. Yay! Yeah, good. Look, look, look at it. Okay. So when we think about 
uh, Sydney and the work that is happening or the growth or, um, or why people are buying, you know, why so many people are coming in. You know, there has to be some sort of infrastructure that needs to be built in to make sure it caters to all those needs, right? And we're talking about central, look at where Parameter sits and how the connectivity from Parameter is going to be in future to every side of Sydney. Does that make sense? And that's why I am quite bullish on the central city. And it's called the central river city, all right? And yes, that's being bullish, all right? That's, that's the place, okay? So most of the things are going to be happening there. And which areas do uh, does fall into this segment, you know, the central river city? Okay, four main areas, but there are a couple of more. And yes, you might say, oh, why are you not talking about those two areas? Well, that's there, you know, they exist. But they are going to not get the growth that much what this is going to get. Because this is called the central city, you know. And these areas are going to be the ones that you'll see a lot more uh, stuff happening. Okay, I don't want to call growth, but stuff happening in these areas. Okay. So let's see what is already happening and what's what's going to be in the future. So Parameter Square, okay, those are some of the pictures of it. So you see that there is a big retail A-grade offices have been built here. But what's the point if uh, you build an office and nobody comes in, yeah. right? Um, well, the office is there, great. With COVID, everybody's working remotely. But here you see, the offices from NAV, Westpac, Deloitte. Now, why I'm taking these names? Because when the big guys move, then you know things are moving, right? So the big, two of those big banks, big four, Deloitte is a consulting. Have KPMG also uh, also having offices in Parramatta. So the next three decades, you know, is going to be around the Central River City. And connectivity will play the biggest role. Okay. So you need you need connectivity, and people go to or uh, people try to uh, let's say live closer to the city because their work is there. So you should be able to connect, get you know get to your work pretty easily. All right. But think about this. This is going to be transformed into something like that. Okay. Faster transport connections. So you have you've seen the Northwest Metro you know, going somewhere yes to the city. Then you have the light rail, that's a parameter light rail, light rail. West Connects motorway, connecting to the airport. Now again, one thing I, I, I forgot to tell you was, since parameter is at the center, it connects to both the airports every the 30, min 30 minutes distance, okay? So yes, do you want to live next to the airport? I don't think anybody wants to live, it, to live there, right? <laughs> you want to actually be, <laughs> be connected to the airport, okay? I should be able to reach there. So it's, I'm not saying that the other areas are not going to get the growth, but what things are saying is those areas are going to receive much, much better. Because people want to yeah, get to work quicker, quicker. And those are the areas which kind of falling in, in, in that uh, zone, all right? Uh, some of the numbers which, again, I have not invented this. Um, you know, Central City District, uh, housing growth, you'll see about 200 or 1,000. Uh, population growth 550, that's pretty high, yeah. Uh, over till 2036. Now we're not talking about till 2056, which is where the western uh, the city is talk, uh, talking about, okay. Uh, employment wise, yes, the eastern one will still hold the maximum one, but you are, you are having, you are building the, the parameter towards that, okay. Okay, my pick on areas to buy. I think everyone wants to know where to buy, where to buy. Yeah. Well, look at, look at some of those uh, areas which are you know, probably marked as blue. And I'm not telling you to buy there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but those are the areas where there will be a lot of housing, you know, house, houses, new houses, you know? So when the new houses comes, it gives people, uh, uh, you know, on a, let's say, on a slightly lower budget to go and buy new homes. Okay, so that's. I can't see from here. Can you read yes, it out loud? Which areas are those? Uh, so this is Western Sydney. Okay, 
So think about your Western Sydney, Parramatta, and this is Eastern. Okay, so that, uh, sorry about that. All right. Um, so focus is not on you know what what it is. Listen, yeah, just listen to what I'm saying. That will make more sense. So this is where the, the airport, Aeropolis. So this is where I think everyone is talking about. Oh, you know, Dubai here, Dubai here. But I'm just twisting around and bringing your focus on to what is actually happening on the ground right here, right now in Parramatta. Yeah. So if you can see over Greater Parramatta, any of the blue lines, you can see there are those growth areas. Okay. Towards west, uh, top west, that is the northwest. You can see the newer houses. So it opens up. So where the connectivity to Parramatta is currently there is those areas are very well connected. You know, through buses, I think primary buses. But there, uh, people can drive to, uh, drive to Paramount also very easily. So yes, look out for the areas on that side, okay, on the top. All right, now gets something interesting, okay? Do I need a buyer's agent to buy a property? Anyone has an answer? Just from the previous topic, yeah. apportionment you allow in the middle of it. So I get your point related to Central City and Aquarius. But if you go by that project, in areas like Gables, people are selling houses for different four million. No connectivity. Yeah, that's right. So what is your viewpoint where in actual in a actual world what is happening is people are preferring building a good school, a good park, okay, good that's areas right. for that's right. branding. That's right. Fantastic. Okay, I, I'll not uh, uh, pick on Gables, but that area has got good schools. Okay? Now, I'm not saying other areas do not have it. That's like the cluster where there are a bunch of good schools. Okay? Pick Bokumuls. Go slightly towards Bella Vista. Go to Telleville. Go to Rousel. Okay? Come towards Ponds. Come towards Glenwood. You have all good schools. So, so schools definitely a factor, but yes, uh, we'll come to that point later on. Okay, it'll, it'll slightly divert from the topic. Uh, why people are buying in some places, right? That's uh, in Gables, particularly why two two point four million. I'll, I'll frame my question. Uh, my frame is that you're building big on the central city, but I'm just giving a thought or a point of view that why central city? If connectivity is the big thing you're selling there, or you you are building big on. What is your viewpoint on the other areas where connectivity is still away, but they have grown exponentially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As compared to Paramount, I think I'll be fair to say I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but as compared to Blacktown and Parameter, right. those areas have grown immensely. That's way correct. That's correct. That, I'll, I'll come to that yeah. because that's the area where I specialize yeah, sure, on. Sure, right? Yeah. All right. Do I need a uh, buyer's agent to buy a property? <laughs> um, nobody gave me an answer. The, my, my answer is no. Yeah? You don't need. <laughs> Do you need a seller's agent to sell your property? No. no. You don't. Okay? But you do go to the seller's agent to sell the property, right? Yes. Okay. We'll leave it there. We'll not let's not answer that question right away. We'll answer it when the time comes. Okay? Let's talk about my recent purchase because I'm trying to kind of convince you guys, right? That buyer's agents are required. Yeah? You're getting feeling of that? Okay, let's let's look at my recent purchase. Oh, what? What? Okay. That's a washing machine. Yes, I recently purchased this washing machine. It gave me a three year replacement warranty, protected by all cust uh, you know, consumer laws. I uh, got a written policy that's applicable. I read the online reviews to make sure I buy the right one for me. And it costed me $700. Yeah? Pretty easy, isn't it? You just go on, find out. Did you think that there was a risk in buying this one? No. No? no. There is probably a risk. Oh, if it, if, it, if it conks, it doesn't work. What do you do? Return it. Return it. Yeah. Do you get the same thing when you're buying a house? No. Okay. You have builder's warranty for like six years. They'll come and fix it. But will they replace it? No. Will they pick your house? Well, I don't like the location anymore. Can they just pick it to somewhere else? Can you read online reviews? Because when I was buying them once, I went on Google, I said, okay, let me find, uh, you know, four Aspen Way, da, 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 da. Okay, give me some Google reviews. Nothing came up. All right, so, okay. 
All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go uh, from this topic into the next one, okay? So let's just spark it, you know, just spark things over there, you know? Uh, I thought, okay, you know, let this be beneficial for all these guys about, and give you some tips on what, uh, about buying, okay? So let's look at these properties, all right? Um, pretty similar area, single, single level. Uh, the top one has a solar heater pool. Uh, because you can use solar, yeah, that's right. Um, now, this one sold in 3rd April, very recently, okay? And do you know whether the market was down, up, anybody knows? It was down. It was down. Okay, so, so April, it's, it's actually boom, okay? February, probably slightly lower. But look at the price difference. Why do you think it happened? It's in the same suburb, not different suburb. It's in the same suburb. No. No, 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 no. Depends on the layout, depends on the interior of the property, depends on the layout. Yeah, that, that, that does play a role, but the, the important factor is this, okay? Whenever you buy a property in a suburb, the location within the suburb is most important. It is a make or break thing, okay? So you buy on the wrong location, you get 100 less. You buy on the right location. And now if, if you go and try to buy this property, if somebody is selling, it's going to be over 17175, easily, okay? But that one will still on the, stay on the market. You'll have tough times selling those properties which are not on a good location. All right, next example. Uh, so that's a three bedroom. I'm comparing a little bit of a, uh, you might think, oh, it's an apple, apple and orange comparison, okay? But uh, look at the land size, okay? Uh, it's on the same um, suburb again, all right? I would say this one is renovated. Got a, got a pool, definitely it has to be priced higher. Am I right? Yeah. But that one is little, not that great, isn't it? Still sold at pretty high. Uh, where, 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 where is that? Where is it? Less than 10 square meters. Or 10 square meters, yeah. I think uh, for me personally, one bathroom is a big minus as to Correct, correct, absolutely. I understand, I understand. But still sold at 1.8. Yes, and it has got a better street appeal. So street factors, yeah? People want to buy in that street, doesn't matter how old the property is. You can knock it down with something that costs three million dollars. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one. Okay. So now you have kind of understood your stuff. Let's look at. Okay. The top property sold for one two six five. It's not down. You know, it, it was sold on twenty third October twenty twenty two. How was the market then? Yeah. Somewhere down. Yeah. Till December, it was it was playing like that. 9th October 2021. What do you think the market was? Uh -huh. Covid boom. Around December as well. It's the same thing, right? Why that property was sold for that price? In a, it's, it's, uh, now, uh, let me tell you. Each of these properties are next to each other. One on this side, one on that side. Is it new or renovated? Yeah. It's a renovated, definitely renovated. Is it renovated. the same property? The no, 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 it's not the same property. It's a completely different property. <laughs> 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 land size is the same. So, so the developer has built, you know, they've cut it in the same land size. So pretty much everything is the same, right? Okay, okay, okay. Here it goes. It's a bad purchase. People have overpaid, okay? So you don't, you, you don't pay too much for the renovation in a bad market over 100k, okay? So, yes. All right. Okay, so, yes. Okay, sorry, that was a little bit of a trick question. Yeah. All right. Okay, um, let's go to another thing that uh, probably will give you some insight. Yeah. Grace want to build their third home after demolishing the old house on the block. They've now been told they can't build there. Council won't allow it, saying it's in a flood zone, and it's sending this couple bankrupt. The, the language between Trina, there is no 
no understanding in all regards to the, the situation that we're in. They've spent lots of money buying their dream home, buying their dream property, getting approval to knock it down, and now having this issue where they might be homeless. In 2021, most of the country was in lockdown. We were masked and property prices were growing by $1,000 a day. Matt and Grace Slade bought this home in the heart of Epping, northwest Sydney. Something we, we couldn't, couldn't miss or couldn't let go of. It was, you know, really amazing in the moment. We were so happy. The couple got straight to work on their knockdown rebuild demolishing the existing 60-year-old home they say was riddled with asbestos. <coughs> then, Parramatta Council rejected the couple's new development application, claiming the block's in a flood zone and contains a large council stormwater pipe within an easement that runs diagonally. Matt and Grace say they're in crisis. Last Monday, this DA officer then turned around, no phone call, nothing, sent an email to, to our builder and said, sorry. The DA officer then said, in fairly bluntly, that no dwelling, no new dwelling is supported on this block of land. And we advise your client to either withdraw or we will refuse it in five business days. <laughs> All right, um, that's a real story, okay, Abhi. Uh, I'm hearing that they've probably got through through the council, but I didn't get any uh, confirmed reports. Uh, how does it feel? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you make sure that you don't buy it? Because it's, it was a very straightforward thing, right? You buy a house, there, but there was a house. I'm going to just knock it down and rebuild. How, yeah, yeah, so, so how much, easier a purchase can be or things may look like can still be very very challenging at the end right so yes i mean that's why you probably <laughs> need yeah you guys think so no still no oh, some, some, someone popping yes over there not me all right so yes, think about it, okay? It could be as simple as that. Um, and there are much more complex things. You know, you could run into easements and stuff like that. Uh, you can have a, yes? But how a buyer's agent can know that complexity? Because even if you have everything, you will never know that, okay, you have trains going Oh, you will know. We know, we know, we know, we know it, okay? We know it, absolutely. There was another example where a couple purchased a Gold Coast property uh, and they had it for five years, and the title was not in their name, and they kept fighting for it, and they, at the end they didn't get it. Yeah? So, so there can be a lot of stuff that may go wrong, but when as a buyer, what, when you go there to buy, you just fall in love with the place, with the, with the, with the property itself, right? But solicitors do the same job, right? Like validating things and you know, easements and whatever falls on the property, they also do that, right? Could be, uh, but they, they are not the experts of, I would say, real estate. You know, what can be approved by the council, what cannot be. Mm -hmm. What's, they, they do not look at whether, or how much the flood is affected, whether there is a bushfire. Now, I'm not saying that you are buying in bushfire because I said so today, okay? I do buy into bushfire lines as well. But then we know where we are getting into. Okay. All right. Okay. Just okay. So you know, you know, there's something about the buyer's agent. They can help you guys some way. Maybe I'll, I'll talk about some of the th things that you can take back home. And yes, think about it. You know, whether our way you doing these things, or then change some tact. Even though you are, let's say, okay, I don't want to buy agent, but yes, it will be very helpful for you guys. Thank you. Getting emotionally attached to the property. What's the result of it? Hard work. Hard break. <laughs> yes, yes. yes, that's right. Um, buying a low grade property, which I show you in comparison, right? You don't make money. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll find it hard uh, to, uh, to sell unless it's a seller's market. 
So think about it. When we the seller's market, everything, oh yeah, it's going on, you know? When it is not that market, you'll find it tough. Okay. Um, underestimating additional cost. Again, that's more around the numbers. My, my friend, he's there, he knows more about the numbers. So again, you know, conveyances, fees, anything with the bank that you need to pay fees on, uh, building and pest. Uh, if you want to do some other inspections which are not covered by building and pest, uh, falls into those categories. Just work on your numbers, you know? Make sure you know your number. That's, that's the point over there. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Okay, so pe people do not think about future resale value. I think that connects back to the, the buying low-grade properties, okay? So you think that, okay, that's my dream home, yeah? I'm going to live here forever. Do you know, on an average, how many years people live in, the, in, in whatever dream home you call? Five. 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 Okay, let's, let's go a little bit higher. Five to ten years. Yes, okay? So around ten years is kind of people, yeah? Most people, and again, I'm not saying you and I, or you know, you want might say little years. Um, not getting professional help from for buying property. Well, that's actually pointing to me, okay? So you're not taking professional help. <laughs> All right, uh, don't know about easements and limitations. So yeah, there might be easement on your property. Is that a danger? To ask that question, is that a danger? If your conveyancer is telling you, okay, that's not a problem, but do you really, can you trust that? You know, that for, you know, professional, so in Australia, it's different professionals have different licensing and they operate in their, you know, uh, pretty much, uh, I would say, in uh, specializations, you know, in, in their specialization. So mortgage broker, definitely, yeah. So if somebody says I can provide you finance advice, you know, on your mortgage, I would say, no, I'm not, thank you. I'm not taking it, okay? Um, okay, next one. Don't know who the real estate agent is working for. <laughs> yeah? I see some smiles. If I replace that to buyer's agent. So t t tell me, the real estate seller's agent, okay? Who are they working for? Sellers. Yeah? And do we go and thinking that they are helping us? Yeah? Uh, I've seen many people, right? And this is the general thing with everyone that these guys are actually helping me because they come across you at very nicely, very friendly. And again, nothing against them. I work with them day in, day out, okay? They're nice people. But when it comes to business, why they exist is for the seller. Yeah? But, uh, on that point, like, ultimately they are working for the commission, right? And the buyer's agent is also working for the commission. If the house gets sell, buyer's agent will also get... Okay, okay, let's leave the money apart, okay? The thing is, um, legally, yeah. I am looking at the interest of the buyer. So what does that mean? I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing a service, I'm getting paid. That's a different thing than I'm doing a disservice and getting paid, okay? So real estate agents do the same thing. Their only thing, only job they have is to get the maximum amount, maximum price for that property. However, buyer's agent work in a very different way, okay? I'll come to that. Uh, takes free advice as good advice. Who all takes advice from, uh, I'll pick on conveyancer, okay? <laughs> Conveyancers, mortgage brokers, and people, other people, yeah? Many people? So yes, take from the right professional. That would help you. Do not do enough research to know about the neighborhood. So that's quite important. You know, where are you going to go in? Where are you going to go and live in? What sort of people <coughs> live around you? What's that's a good street, bad street, what sort of thing it is? Yeah? All right. Very tiring? Or everyone still go, still going good? Yeah? Okay. So what do we do? Yeah, one thing is those mistakes, we take care of those mistakes and more. Yeah. We, we help you, as I told you, we help you buy the right property at the right price. So I'm, I, I'm, I'll refrain myself from saying that I'm going to get you discount. In a seller's market, if you're getting discount, that's a bad property. Just, you know, be there. Uh, our services? Uh, yeah, we, we can help you end-to-end, -end. we help you on auctions, we help you evaluate and negotiate. Uh, there are stuff we do for property invest investors, and we advise to you if you if you want to sell as well. Yeah? So who, who would be the best agent to sell? Do you really need to sell? Or is it uh, better things that you can do? Okay, so that those are our services, but some of the facts that we, we collect, that are, these are the data that we collect, you know, on a weekly basis, is around option clearance rate. Now, 
focus on uh, the trend, okay? So information on, okay, if, if the trend is going high towards 80%, that's actually seller's market. <laughs> 70 to 80% seller's market, okay? Around 60, below 60 is sort of neutral market. Uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> let me correct you. 60 to 70 is around your, your new, new to market. Okay. Towards, the more it goes towards 70, it's becoming sales market. Below 60, you'll, you'll see uh, buyer's market. Okay. However, uh, the, the trend suggests, and if, if you plot these sort of graphs, you know, we, we do it all the time, you can see that the withdrawal is coming down, or withdrawal passed in auctions are coming down, and the auction clearance rates are going up. Going up. So that suggests you know where it is. Okay. Uh, this is some of the things, which is the total listings across different suburbs in the Northwest and the Hills area. Very low on this side. Can you see? So, you know, so people are struggling to buy over there. However, if you go a little bit up, you probably have a good chance. Make sense? Okay. Um, now it's gonna get a little bit boring, okay? I thought I'll not bore you with this, but there are a few of them in, 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 in these regions. And what else? Uh, I'm a property developer myself. I'm trying to do a you know, two lot subdivision. And uh, the, the value at this stage is almost 300 to 350K up um, from, from the purchase, you know, after, after the DA. Good, uh, questions. Now, for questions, I think somebody was asking questions but he has left. For good questions, I have got some gift. Yeah? Are you ready? Who's coming forward? Somebody who writes Federal Russia? Uh, yes, go for it. I don't know about Federal Russia, but I'll ask a question. So how is the rental yield in Sydney? Because as far as I know, the properties are at billions. Capital Poor. is good, but uh, the, if you see the rent, you definitely are going to pay from your pocket. They Correct. are negative years. So That's obviously right. there are like, you know, uh, strategies, whether you want, you know, cash flow or you want capital growth. How is it possible to get both of them together? In Sydney? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. oh, thank you. That's a good question. Oh. That's makes me think. Okay, you, look, um, negative gearing, positive gearing, I think you put more money in, you'll be positive gear. okay? So, simple calculations. But yield-wise, it is not going to get you better yield. That's it. Now, I'll give you an example, which, uh, uh, which uh, for which um, you know, a property that I'm looking for my client in North Kellyville. It was sold in 2021, boom time, for almost 1.2 million dollars. The price for that same property is 1.75. Do you want to negatively gear and buy it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, if I, I'm gonna get a 500K, uh, okay, nobody can predict it, it's half a million dollars, why not? Okay, so the, the, the question definitely is genuine, but it's, it depends on your situation, all right? Sydney, you have to be very clear what you're getting into, and you get into it, yeah. Growth-wise, again, I'm not a person who can guarantee it, but if you just look at how things have performed in Sydney, Sydney is Sydney, okay? Going like as you say, like 500, 600,000 at least yeah. in the last two years. Yeah. Forget COVID, even before that. That's, right. that's yeah. right. And that was boom. Think about it. 2021 was boom. You bought in boom. And you are almost buying, and when the market is climbing up. Okay, next question. I'll take yours first, and I'll come to you. Now, when we talk about uh, units or row houses or shared dwellings where uh, the outgoings are there from the owner's pocket if it's rented out. Yeah. Then obviously if they buy in uh, high rise buildings, the outgoings are more and the rent may not balance it out. And if it's a very standalone building, the rent may not be that much, but obviously the outgoings are not that much. So how to strike the right balance about that? Okay, when it comes to Sydney, I think it's very, very, very well connected with the similar one. Okay, where your yield is in question. Uh, the first thing is, I'm not a big fan of units. Okay? Again, people may have other opinions, but I'm not, okay? 
it, it, it has to be it has to be in a location like Bondi. Okay, I'll buy a unit in Bondi. I'll, I'll be safe. But Bondi is not everywhere. Yeah. So I I I do not recommend generally units. I've seen people making big mistakes with units. They have lost money. I'll give you an example. In a quarter, in one quarter, um, this guy was asked to pay ten thousand dollars that one particular owner because there was some big building issue. So which means imagine, you know, other people were also be paying around ten thousand dollars to fix it up. So I, I'm not a big fan of it, uh, but you need to do a good due diligence to buy in the units. Okay. So I think the balance, it's the numbers game. You put more money money in, I think your numbers will start working. You put less money in, you have to think about capital growth, which means again, you might have to shell out some money from your pocket. Sorry, I'll, I'll go to I'll go to this person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just a basic question: What is the fee structure for buyer's agent? Oh, okay, okay. So it's a general question or mine? <laughs> <laughs> the second thing is, uh, like I think we pointed out seller agent, right? They work yeah. for seller. Yeah. And they might be just trying to get the deal done, right? Because they want a the commission. Yeah. Really it applies to buyers as well? Sorry? Okay, so uh, buyer's agent works on commission as well as on, uh, or on a fixed, file, a fixed fee. Okay, some buyer's agent take a, a little bit of a, a sign up fee or an engagement fee, which I do, and then we get started. But some people may take full, or some people may take 50 50. Every, everyone has a different way of doing it. Um, does that answer your question, or you, are, you want to know something very specific? That's fine. Yeah, okay. Sorry, there were some people who had raised hand. I'll come to you. Did I hand over this to you? Yeah. Uh, so for all uh, sales occupier, what uh, if, and if they don't engage a buyer agent, what are the must consider aspects that they should consider before they sign the dotted lines or is there a bare minimum checklist that you should at least look at? One, two, three, four, five. Sign me up. Well, that's my IP, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm something out from yeah, there. So that's why I wanted to get something out of your IP. Uh, look, um, I would say just don't follow the crowd. Okay, you have to do your research properly. Do do read, do listen to what people are saying, or you know people who are in the industry for some time. I would say don't jump and try to go and buy today, okay? So that would be my advice, instead of uh, you know, giving you something, hey, don't do this, because that's not one thing, right? I just wanted to bounce off of that uh, question around units. So do you have the same sentiment for areas like Parameta where you said the growth is gonna be exponential? In uh, so look, look uh, just understand me, Parameta is going to be developing, okay? Yeah. So it's already started. So when I say Parameta is the is the hub, doesn't mean just sit on Parameta, yeah? Do I want to live next to this building? You know, where there is a motorway or something going on? No, I understand. Yeah, that, so so it's it's the connectivity to the Parameta will be the key, all right? Yeah, go ahead, but, sorry. But do you recommend units in areas like Parameta, of course, looking at the street and, and all of that? See, if you do a good due diligence, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, it would be it would be tough for me to also see that you guys buy something and you have to shell out money just for you know nothing uh, something that's gone wrong. Okay. okay. So some people still get, going to get uh, uh, chocolate and uh, who, who, who that was? Sorry, I'm going to give and then come back to you. And this is for when you buy a house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the keychains are definitely for when you buy a house or <laughs> when you buy through me, you get more. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm coming to you. Yes, tell me. Yeah, actually, uh, when you plan to look for property, especially in Sydney, yeah. I, I was actually following the market for some time, and I've seen that like areas like Box Hill, Rouse Hill, yeah. um, Scoville, yeah. where you are getting 
probably good good plots, yeah. in, but the sizes are small. But there are areas, or even if you go to Australia or Leppington, that area as well, you are getting smaller plots, but maybe no easement. Uh, builders are okay to buy whatever your designs and all this stuff, but million plus range. Whereas there are probably older houses with bigger land in some of the areas in Western Sydney, where you are getting probably 600, 700 range. But those are like 50 years old houses. So uh, when you look for properties that is buying it for investment, not for your stay purpose, um, what are the areas we should choose about? Like, is it worth going for this 50 years old houses with a big land, where which which has many flat potential, as you mentioned, versus the smaller one, which is probably a newer one, newer one, <coughs> probably growth area. But I mean, I'm not saying both are not grow areas, but I'm a bit confused sometimes when I was hmm. which one to choose. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other people have the same question. Similar? Yeah? Same question? Good one. Okay. Um, location, right? I talked about location, location, location. It has to be that. I think everything around that, uh, sorry, everything revolves around location. So okay. you're saying size of the property? <laughs> Say, yes. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a very contrasting example. 100 square meters of land in Bondi versus 100 square meters of land, let's say, yeah. Which one will you buy? I mean, let's say the prices are same. <laughs> <laughs> that's Australian dream too. Correct, that's right, that's right. So, so this is how I look at it, okay? okay? Does that location demand that price? Now if I pick Kellyville, okay? Somebody bought a house, a well renov renovated house, it's a single level, you could just go and live in. They bought it for 1.856. Is it a good price? Yeah, for that area, yes. What's the plan? He's gonna knock it down and rebuild. <laughs> What's the land cost over there if you just around two billion, right? <laughs> so it's a great deal that he's got. Seven hundred square meters. So think about that. Okay, so older ones, bigger blocks may be better. I don't know the exact comparison, right? Smaller ones can be better, let's say, but you have to be on the location. Can I add something to the same question? Yeah, please so. Uh because I had a I have like a practical experience with that. I bought one in the LA just by thinking oh it's a bigger land, you know. And then at the same time, I bought in Master Park. Master Park, I bought land for 450, built a house on that, another 400 something. So it costed me 850 altogether. Same time, 2018. Yeah, and yeah. Master Park sitting at 1.5 now. <laughs> and Netherlands is sitting, uh, I spent 550, it's sitting at 7. Netherlands. <laughs> uh, okay, somebody had a question from there, right? Was that you? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, this something like a heritage property in the area near CBD, like in Yes, yes. Ashfield and other areas? Yes, there would be. I think you have to really do the due diligence and check on it. Yeah, it, it restricts you from doing a lot of stuff. All right? Uh, like, good question, but I don't have chocolate. I have the key. <laughs> but are older properties like older car become something which is like great? Like it's location again. Because they are like 20 minutes from city, but they've got something exactly, like... Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's, metros it, and it's, it's, it's the location, okay? So if the location did have the connectivity to areas and stuff like that, you'll see that. And connectivity to the right areas. Okay. So. I, I heard something like, near the right of the property, a unit which was, which was sold for 1.8 million. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. There was a unit near Croydon which was bought like... Uh, it, Short of an auction from like, uh, I think from yeah, yeah. 1 million to 1 Correct, that's right, that's right. I, I was also observing an auction uh, somewhere else, I think uh, Double Bay or somewhere. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, look, uh, uh, that's what I say. You know, if you have to be on the location, what the people are looking into that, wouldn't be able to, like, uh, uh, you know, say something in general, you know, saying, oh, this is, this is what it is. It has to be specific to that property. So when you ask me about one particular property, there has to be some specific. So if I have seen it, I know I can talk about it. Yeah. <coughs> for, for the next five years, if you have to pick Box Hill or Oran Park. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific question, you sign up with me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So something I'll tell you. I work, I work in the hills and the northwest. Okay, so you probably got my answer. <laughs> How do you. Well, how much factors you can put up in the life of the building, like, you know, when your mind, uh, how old or how new, you know, like, 
Um, see, it's, it again depends on your individual needs because I work with home buyers, right? I see the see the uh, see the factors which are different from investors. You know, so yes, um, it's very individual, very much individual. Some people who I work with say I'm happy to buy a rundown property. I'm happy to renovate it and live in. Yeah. There are some people who want a new house. I said, new house? Okay, how new? Oh, ten years. All right, that's like very new, okay? <laughs> but sometimes I see new, 20 years old is fine. So it's very specific. Um, you need to know a lot more about the property itself, what you're getting into. Correct? Um, yeah, it's hard for a general answer, answer, but yes, you need to get into the specifics of why you want to buy that. Are you ready to put some money into renovate and live? So I have just a question regarding this fee because expertise is expertise and when you're buying something like that, that so how this thing work if you engage with someone and then later like probably we just drop in between. So in your case and you turn out in the industry, how it works with fee structure or? I, I'll tell you about myself. I think uh, there was a general question. So I'll tell you about myself. I charge a fixed fee for the whole